Hi, today we are in San Francisco in the band page office, or well, almost. Hi Jay, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, I'm Jay Sider and the CEO and founder of Bandpage. Awesome. When did you come up with the business idea? It's, it's a bit of a long story. I was um, grew up as a musician um, and I was playing and singing music when I was a kid and uh, that kind of led me into wanting to have a career in the music business and so I started managing bands and venues around mm -hmm. the country and then after uh, many years of doing that I just realized that there was a lack of uh, efficiency um, uh, in the business model uh, in the music industry as well as the technology that was being used and so moved out here to San Francisco um, to solve those those uh, problems uh, in, in 2009 and then launched the company in 2010. Okay, cool. And so when you came here to San Francisco, what have been your first steps? So did you just build a website or did you talk to investors? What did you do? Well, you know, the first step uh, for me, I, I, I didn't know anybody out here. I just knew that if I wanted to build, uh, you know, if I wanted to build a, an app or a, a platform, um, that this was the best city in the world uh, yeah. to be in. It had the highest, um, you know, uh, population density of, of engineers and designers uh, and entrepreneurs and investors. And so, you know, as they say, fish where the fish are. And so uh, I came out here uh, for the sole, sole purpose of uh, just getting involved in the community. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways that you can start uh, a business. There's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways of getting it started. Um, but uh, the way I started it, and I think the way you gain, uh, the way you have a lot of leverage as an entrepreneur, is if you start with a small team. Mm -hmm. um, and so I came out here um, late 2009, started searching. Uh, you know, every night uh, I went out, and every night in San Francisco, there's conferences yeah. and you know, uh, tech and startup uh, meetups. Um, every night you can go out to them and and meet people and so I did that um, for a couple months and I talked to uh, you know I'm sure over to over a thousand people that I talked with um, to try to get introduced to the right people that would help that would be interested in the idea uh, and so my first step was to find in you know one engineer and one designer um, that uh, would work with me out of my you know living room uh, to get the idea um, built and, and put up online and how did you convince them it's not, it's not an easy thing. Um, I think the most important thing when you're starting, you know, there are, lo there are lots of number of important things, but one of the most important things for me was simply um, uh, being resourceful and driven. Um, and uh, because it, it, you know, for, for finally when I did find the right people to join me, uh, like I said, I'd, I'd realistically, I probably talked to close to a thousand people about it. And some of those people were interested and started working with me and then stopped, you know, um, and then others uh, uh, worked a little bit longer and, and then it didn't quite work out. And, and then finally I found uh, these, you know, these individuals. Um, and uh, the way we did it um, was, I think, you know, a, a setup and a structure similar to, to some other startups, you know, around this area, which is it's a small team that starts and you all work with equity yeah. and you believe in the, the vision. Um, and um, I'll get behind it and, and um, you know, if, if you're aligned on what you want to build, you believe you're joining a team that can build it um, and you're incentivized, you know, through, yeah. through equity, um, then, then uh, you know, that's, that's how we did it and I think it aligns everybody on the early team uh, to be able to, to have a go at it. So once you have developed your MVP on the band page, what type of traction did you gain in order to uh, in, um, find some investors? Mm -hmm. You know, when I when I first moved here, um, I talked with everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, designers and engineers and, uh, and folks, but also investors and other entrepreneurs to really try to get to know yeah. a lot of people. And so, uh, after we had launched the product, you, you know, if you can, if you can get a team and a small team and start building something and launch it, you have far more leverage than you do um, if, if you go to investors before that point. If you go with a, you know, a wireframe and an idea yeah. versus you already have a product and traction, um, you have more leverage, you, you can give up less of the company for, you know, for more funding. Mm -hmm. um, and so we launched the product 
um, you know, we, we hit really strong market fit. Um, so it took off pretty quickly. Um, and we had, you know, a couple hundred bands sign up and then a couple thousand artists sign up. And, uh, and so at that point, um, investors saw that, you know, it was some, it was, we had created a product that um, was uh, creating a lot of value for our customers. Um, and so they were interested in being involved. And so um, one of the things I did to, to really help us uh, in that way was uh, I got to know this guy, Larry Marcus. Um, and he is, uh, you know, the managing director of Walden Venture Capital um, and a, just a, a brilliant guy, um, especially, you know, he has a lot of uh, he, connections, um, you know, in the music industry. Um, you know, he was named Billboard's 100 Most Powerful People, uh, as well as just in general, uh, you know, a very well-known tech investor. Um, and so I worked very, very hard to get him involved. And yeah. once I did that, um, we were able to, um, uh, he, he helped to introduce us to, to other people. And so one of the first things I tell entrepreneurs is, you know, when you land in a, in a city and you start to build um, your startup, make sure as quickly as possible you find uh, advisors around the, you know, that, that you can put around the company that are um, as the, you know, as powerful as you can find them, right? At, at different levels, as you're building a company, you'll you'll be able to get uh, more and more powerful um, and unique people yeah. around your company. And so, you know, just you 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 kind of look out at your network and you find the most um, influential or uh, powerful person that you can, and you try to get them involved. And then, um, as you continue to build the company, you find even more powerful and influential yeah. people that can help because they really make a difference it's, and in this case with Larry Marcus he was you know probably the sole reason we we put together our seed round of funding sure. uh, and then you know he's continued to be uh, just incredibly powerful and helpful in helping us build this cool. business. Jay uh, let's talk about the business model of Ben Page. What is it all about? What type of value proposition do you deliver to what type of customer segments? Yeah, so uh, our main goal as a business is we uh, help musicians reach and monetize their customers in the most cost-effective way to increase revenue. Yeah. Um, and so we look at musicians, uh, they're a business and they have a product mm -hmm. to sell to their customer. And, um, and so uh, the, 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 the clear service that we provide is helping that business uh, sell their products, whether it's tickets or merchandise or VIP offers, and distribute those out to their customers, where their customers are most likely to buy those products. And when their customers buy one of those products, we take a 10% cut mm -hmm. of that sale. And so, um, you know, we have half a million musicians on the platform now. Uh, we, we distribute um, and display those musicians' content and commerce to hundreds of millions of fans um, oh, across uh, uh, most of the major streaming platforms today. Okay, cool. This, this also means that you not only display the content on your platform or website, but also on other media like YouTube and so on? Yeah, actually the whole point of what we do is to help the business, uh, the musicians, reach their customers yeah. where they are. Yeah. You know, if you think about yourself as a fan, you know, where are you spending your time these days with musicians? Yeah. It's it's probably not on their website or Facebook page anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. probably you're probably spending far more time on streaming services, um, listening to music and interacting with them there. And so instead of us being a destination to tell uh, yet another place for bands mm -hmm. to tell their fans to go, um, we we are truly a you know B two B. Uh, B2B to C, if you will, um, where we help the businesses reach their customers um, on the streaming services. And, uh, and, and yeah, there's now 1 billion monthly active users across streaming services. And we're just about the only way for every musician in the world to reach the customers on those platforms. Mm -hmm. And do you also have a way, um, because here we are in the Silicon Valley, so many big data, machine learning startups, um, are you also offering a way for matching the supply and demand, so meaning the mus musicians and the customers in a more efficient way based on pattern recognition or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So especially in the music business, we were really um, have this just incredible opportunity that's happening right now. Uh, where for the first time ever as a, as a musician, as a business, you can 
truly segment and, and understand your customer based on their listening behavior or behavioral data. Um, and so if you would listen to uh, an artist you know, 157 times versus listen to another artist seven times, there's a, there's a clear uh, statistically significant uh, percentage likelihood that you would like the, that you would buy a ticket or a piece of merchandise or something to the artist that you um, listen to 157 times versus seven, right? Um, and so we start to understand that data, the behavioral data, and uh, apply a uh, kind of qualify uh, and quantify um, the, the percentage likelihood that you would buy you know, something from this artist versus this other one and then match it up. Uh, in that way. And so today we're now sending over 1.5 million fans to musician stores uh, every month and um, we, uh, that, that's growing uh, rapidly and uh, we're the first company in the music industry to take listening data uh, with, with a, you know, where we apply a, a very large um, data uh, machine learning algorithm to it to understand the likelihood that this uh, individual is going to be interested in X type of content or commerce from that artist. And every customer needs to be locked in before looking at the content and so on? Or is it also that anybody can look at the website and maybe you don't even know who he is because he only got some browser fingerprint and so on? Yeah, so this is actually, again, we're distributing out to the streaming services. And so we partner with the streaming services um, to analyze the data okay. on, on their platform. So we do that as a service for the streaming services. Uh, and then uh, crunch the data, attach the offer from one of the 500,000 artists, send it back and display it on the streaming service. So, yeah. you know, the, the future of the music business is, is truly going to be just a, a, an amazing experience for fans yeah. where everything you're interested in will basically just be delivered to you um, uh, as we see you start to listen to more and more artists uh, or more and more of this particular artist um, and we can personalize the experience to you um, you'll you'll automatically be uh, notified of your favorite artist or the types of yeah. things that you like to buy or the ways you like to interact with an artist and it, and it really shouldn't be spammy at all because we should be able to see and understand hey you know, you like this, uh, you like buying tickets, yeah. but anytime we've displayed a t-shirt to you, you just, you never buy that. So yeah, we yeah. stop, we pull back on that and stop sending those types of things to you. And when you look at the revenue streams for the musician, huh, um, can you provide us a little bit in, in some insights of this revenue split? So for example, for digital goods or some offline stuff with merchandising, events, tickets, whatsoever. So just some, some ballpark. Yeah, numbers. absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, over the years, there's been a major shift in the music business where the main product that musicians as a business sold uh, was music, mm. was records, uh, CDs and, and downloads, but that's dropped by billions and billions of dollars uh, in our industry. And so uh, it shifted heavily over to tickets mm -hmm. and merchandise and VIP experiences. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, the bulk of a musician's career now um, is is coming from touring and merchandise and, and VIP experiences. Are you organizing or have you ever think, uh, thought of organizing some kind of collaborative concerts? Yeah? Because if you know what type of uh, individuals are loving what type of music um, and maybe then you can even combine some kind of five to ten musicians who have some kind of overlap for ma maximizing the people that show up and the uh, willingness to pay. Absolutely. You know, we are at the very beginning of what the, you know, using this data and what this data can mean for our industry, and and just like that, there are there are going to be incredible new innovations that come from this, including that where you normally wouldn't see a country artist yeah. open for a hip hop artist, yeah. but there is a 90% overlap for yeah. people in you know Dayton, Ohio, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happen to love those two artists, yeah, yeah. and um, and you can sell out a bigger show if you book both of them and. Than yeah. separately, so that that is a great great example of things to come, and it, it will, that will definitely be happening in cool. the future. Cool stuff. What other cool stuff can you imagine, just based on really understanding the music preferences? Frankly, I believe the entire industry should should run on this mm -hmm. infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, with with any industry, the more um, 
uh, on the more data and, and better understanding you have about your customers, the more you can personalize the experience, the, the, the better uh, products you can deliver to them. And the more insights you have from your customer, the better you can run your business. And so you think about um, you know, just the stuff that we're talking about and, and what you just mentioned, um, understanding um, the, the, the likelihood that certain fans are going to like an artist coming to this town versus that town. You'll be able to do these collaborative shows. Um, you'll be able to, um, if you're one of the biggest fans of a particular artist, you know, an artist will sh just happen to like show up, pop up on your screen and, you know, uh, do a private show for you and, um, you know, a couple of others. And then on the industry side, um, we'll, you know, the more you can understand trends of mm -hmm. uh, who's, you know, what genre is being listened to, yeah. how is an artist uh, rising yeah. and breaking. Yeah. Um, it's incredibly uh, powerful and useful tool for uh, managers to find new talent. Yeah, right? Right. If I'm a manager and I like uh, hip hop, yeah. I can use this to understand who are the up and coming artists instead yeah. of trying to you know, just take it from a gut level. That's what a lot of managers and labels yeah. do have done in the past. They just hear it and they believe you know that it's good, or they'll they'll use uh, Facebook likes, or mm -hmm. they'll use uh, you know these different things to show, or blogs to show that things are happening. But there's no truer source uh, than people actually using in a product. You know the musicians' uh, music, listening to uh, seeing a seeing artist trend based on people actually consuming that. Um, so I think it's going to be not just uh, on the consumer side, having your two favorite artists in two completely different genres play together, but also um, you know, the tools that will, the data that will direct our entire industry to, um, to improve our, our business. I think the really interesting point later on for you will be to really focus and not be too diluted because there are so many opportunities what you could do and deliver some kind of services. For example, if, if I'm just thinking about um, um, Helping uh, or doing some crowd financing of artists, yeah, just based on pattern analysis. Yeah. Okay, you can do this, yeah. But or you can also do uh, help finding some uh, sponsors. But okay, you can do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. There are so many different things that you could yeah. do, yeah. but keeping really focused uh, seems to be a very hard issue. Yeah, that's the number one. I mean, not number one, but that's a very uh, you know well-known reason why uh, companies fail is because they try to do too much. Yeah. And so, you know, we focus very clearly on, on one thing, which is helping this business take their products and reach their reach and sell it to their customers yeah. in the most cost effective way to increase revenue. That's it. Yeah. Now that's it. Now and as the industry grows and as our, our platform continues to grow, uh, we can open up into some select new yeah. uh, opportunities. But like you say, focus is, um, I think, one of the things that we're best at doing. Jay, before you said that you're taking 10% of the revenue that you are helping the artists with, um, is there any other type of revenue source involved or is this independent of whether it's merchandise, uh, soundtracks, tickets, whatsoever, every, everybody 10%? Yep, everything 10%. It's a $36 billion industry right now for yeah. those things, tickets, merch, and VIP experiences. Worldwide or US? Yeah, worldwide. Okay. And, uh, and that's going to grow an incredible amount because of some of the things that we've been talking about because um, we're able to reach a much bigger audience uh, uh, in a much more customized, you know, personalized way. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, the, you know... If you think about doing a different model, like uh, charging musicians to you know a service fee to, to use the platform, uh, if you calculate that and you, you try to charge people who don't have money, <laughs> then sure. you don't become a very large business. Sure. But on the flip side, musicians have the biggest brands in the world. If collectively musicians are the most engaged categories on every social network, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc., Instagram. Um, and uh, so if you can help those businesses who have the biggest, uh, most accessible brands in the world, if you can help those businesses run their business better, um, then ultimately you can tap into a multi-billion dollar opportunity. And so, again, in the, in the effort to stay focused, um, that that's what we're that's what we're doing and sticking to it. Jay, you said that you have rough about around about a half a million um, fan, um, band, band, band members. Um, 
is it band members or bands? Bands. Okay. Musicians. Yeah. And uh, also musicians. And uh, can you give us some kind of split uh, of the average number of um, people per band? So uh, just uh, understanding whether there's so many solo artists or really some ten people bands, and. Um, also, uh, understanding of whether some people just having fun yeah, and st just starting out yeah. super early in the beginning yeah. or some really like well-known... Uh yeah, in the beginning it was just a platform open to, you know, a any any artist and, and we were just kind of opening it up to the world. Um, now, over the last, you know, two years, uh, we've focused very heavily on the biggest artists in the world. Mm -hmm. So, if you study the economics of the music industry, you see that the top 2,500 yeah. artists generate most of the traffic, most listening, um, and most, uh, you know, tour income and, and music sales and yeah. all this stuff. And so we've focused heavily uh, ensuring that they, you know, have have a band page profile set up and, and, and going. And so we now have, um, you know, we keep a, a constant list, a constantly updating list of the top 2,500 artists okay. yeah. based on our partners, who's trending on, yeah. you know, these different major streaming services like we we partner with YouTube and, yeah. and Spotify and Vivo and um, Groove Music uh, Microsoft service and Google yeah. uh, etc etc and so we can see when artists are popping up and uh, when they pop into the 2500 we make sure uh, if they don't have a band page profile to reach out yeah. uh, at this point um, most uh, every artist in the top 2500 have a have a band page profile cool. so everyone from Beyonce to Arcade Fire to um, Jay-Z uh, you know on and on uh, have have a band page profile uh, and then um, you know we we built a large platform so that uh, any artist can can log in yeah. and update their profile um, and so sure it, it we also have up-and-coming artists around the world um, we're a worldwide platform that um, you know allows musicians to to, to get up, to get set up and start making money. When you just said Beyonce uh, and Jay Z, I was just thinking, why are you not uh, organizing the music awards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, again, focus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Good step. one step at a time. Cool. Let's talk about uh, advice to first-time entrepreneurs. So you have definitely learned some stuff along the way. Um, what uh, learnings can you share with our audience? This has been the best experience of my life. Um, you know, I've just learned so much. So there, there there's I'd, so much I'd love to share, um, you know, uh, a kind of across the spectrum of, of building a company. Uh, but I, I think at the, you know, at the core of it, um, first time entrepreneurs or people that are thinking about doing it, I think the, the most interesting thing that I've found that stop entrepreneurs um, uh, from, from going after their dream is is they just don't start mm. um, a lot of people feel like you they need um, to have oh I need to have an engineer and then I have to have an investor lined up I don't know how to do marketing I'm not sure how to manage people uh, or do PR uh, you know they think about all of these things um, before they've even started and so uh, even just thinking about this big task stops them from yeah. from starting and uh, so I think the the most important you know advice to folks that are thinking about starting a business is just just getting started. Know that it's okay that you don't know everything, and know that you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but you're going to learn from it. And and frankly, that's to my in my opinion the point of life is mm -hmm. is this is a great you know experience of life that we get to learn um, and try things. It's you're not. You're not necessarily you're not you're not failing uh, if you if you don't achieve some goal you're learning, yeah. right? And it's going to make you stronger, you know, and stronger and stronger. And um, let's say you know, like thing I really love to say is worst case scenario, um, you try you you take uh, you know six months or a year to try to do this, and you just learn an incredible amount. You you get to know the a field that you're really interested in a lot better. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. You go back to the exact same job and position that you're in right now. Yeah. Worst case, you end up right back where you are, you know? Um, so I like to tell folks, don't think about it like I'm starting a company, I'm, oh, and this is gonna be my life forever. Think of it like, I'm gonna take a six month sabbatical and I'm gonna save up enough money, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars, working your whatever job, 
a couple thousand dollars uh, to, and, and you know what I did, I had I lived on a, I slept on the floor and ate rice and beans, and I had I think I had like three thousand bucks when I moved to San Francisco, right. and and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's too expensive and whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, there are there are ways to do it. Yeah. If you want to do it, you can find rent here for four hundred bucks, and you really, can, yeah, oh. uh, absolutely. I know a few places right now, uh, four or five hundred bucks. Um, you know, eat affordably, eat lots of greens and rice and beans, and, <laughs> you know, yeah. and you can get by, um, you can get by for six months or nine months. And if every day you're going out there trying to make this happen, yeah. um, the cool thing is, uh, you will, cre- you will create some sort of progress. You will get to know people in that industry and maybe you don't end up, um, you know, having a su- successful business, but you end up, um, getting to know a number of other folks in your industry yeah. that and then you 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 you're better off than the job that you had before yeah. and so I, I just I think you know finding ways to take the things that are normally scary for people mm-hmm. you know starting a business and, and venturing in this and making it more of an adventure an opportunity to learn a uh, six month you know sabbatical from what you're doing and knowing that you're probably going to end up um, you know uh, doing something you enjoy more um, than you are today be- because you've spent that time. If not, getting funded and building a company and growing it more and becoming, you know, uh, building a successful business. Cool. Thank you so much, Jay, for your time and your insights. Absolutely. So next time you are thinking about starting a company and you are totally afraid of starting because of all the unknowns, just keep starting, hustling your way around, living um, off in a very cheap apartment, meeting lots of people, working on your idea. And if it does not work out, that's fine. You learn, learn, you learned a lot and uh, you met, met some cool people uh, and you can go back to an old job. I mean, everybody can do a normal job, but maybe you were fulfilling your dream and starting a great company. Thanks. Great. Awesome. Yeah, thank you.